I think we're in for a ride. Yeah. Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. We're just a couple of kooky, crazy kids in love. Love doing some reactions together. We do indeed. And so we're checking out Doom Eternal, and uh, this is one by uh, Max Zero R. Uh, it's a channel that we've been told to check out. It's his review of Doom, Doom Eternal. It's oh. Doom Eternal review, alpha male gaming. So I heard it's really funny. I heard it's, uh, you know, we've uh, checked out some stuff from Doom before, and yeah, so finally gonna check it out and see what's up with it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And if you want more Doom reactions from us, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. I swear to God, if you throw me into that portal, I will fuck you. <laughs> you were never one of us. Ooh. You were nothing but an imposter. Oh my god, you false crewmates. Oh my god. The hell? I don't know. Oh! Oh, wow. Okay. Doom Eternal is a game with so much testosterone dripping from its orifices that it <laughs> caused me to create a sun via mitosis. In this adventure, you play as John Doom, a man stricken with irrationally severe autism who does not consider or think through his actions and effects on other people. And in his quest to save mankind, kills God, God God, and Satan God God, who is also himself. If this oh. in-depth and engaging hardcore Whoa. male gameplay sounds appealing, then I've got the Anime. game for you. This game is of course the sequel to the critically acclaimed Doom 2016 with a few key differences. All right then, buddy. I'm going to shit yourself. <laughs> Which meaningfully extends and builds off of the this game just not sped up. that we love, then extends them some more off of a fucking cliff until the product that emerges at the other side resembles crack concentrate. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you've probably played the game since I don't actually want to help people buy things. I'm here to entertain <laughs> people, and if you're clamoring for entertainment and haven't purchased this game, yet do yourself a favor there's enough male hormones here to transition someone and i can oh my, <laughs> results, my fellow sigma males so whether you're a psychopath like me or new to modern doom games come with me on this amazing journey through twitch gameplay beautiful environments nonsensically fucked up lore and remixed mongolian throat singing for money is temporary but doom is eternal all right all right i think we're in for a ride yeah I would say that Doom Eternal's gameplay is quite unique and not for the reasons that you would think. Everything in Doom Eternal is funneled directly into a single, robust, multifaceted, multinational, and unilaterally oh, combat tier. system from which the entire game is built around. But Maxor, I hear you thinking, that's every game ever. Yes. Maxor, okay. Every good game ever. If I, for instance, became 12 and booted up GTA 5, I would be able to do at least a dozen unfun activities. Doom's design is focused harder than the average Persona fan on his local playground. And and that is special. You will play the game in the way that is fun, or you will lose. So as good as 2016 was, a Polygon journalist could beat the first half, and that's unacceptable. Because yes, it is actually unfun to play games after having a lobotomy. In other games, I have to choose between things like stealth, vehicles, or outright combat. Yet Doom Eternal asks the question, why not force you to use every mechanic, all the time, without stopping? In a world where AAA studios try to pander to everyone, it's refreshing to have a game that sets out to do one thing the best and actually have developers who give a shit about linear design and gameplay. And the main <laughs> component of that gameplay is the arsenal, because John Doom uses every weapon throughout the game. The first shotgun is used in the last level, and the last level is used by the first shotgun. When you get an upgrade, it isn't a replacement, it's a genuine addition to your arsenal. Every one of them has specific uses, and yet these don't interfere at all. They enhance. How do I kill an enemy? Well, shoot his hands off, fire a rocket, fire a ballista, fire flames, freeze him, fire fire on his freeze and fro shotgun. <laughs> Gun. Brain aneurysm. Just as important as how you kill is how you heal and how you restore. Fortunately, the aggression of this game rivals my dog in a kindergarten. Like real life, the only way to get ahead of the competition is to kill them. How do I kill them? <laughs> kill them. How do I get ammo back? Kill them with a chainsaw. Oh my god. Most weapons in the game have two mods which completely change their behavior. Such stunning examples would be the microwave beam, the automatic shotgun, and the fucking destroyer blade. God, that shit's cool. But on top of eight weapons, 12 mods, and a declining mental state, we keep going. More than any one weapon, you'll be using your suit abilities, and they all have individual buttons. This is in addition to the eight that you use for weapons. These would be things like zoom for fast, grenade for death, Swedish grenade for life, punch for no reason, and a flamethrower for armor. I play Invoker in Dota 2, and this shit makes me play my keyboard like it's a fucking Moonlight Sonata. I thoroughly recommend playing PC and never using the weapon wheel for maximal Ritalin output. And if you can't switch weapons fast or play on easy mode, 
That's fine, man. We're all busy. How about I give you two more buttons? You thought I was done. There's two ways to do it easier than Doom Eternal. The fun way or the funny way. And to maximize the funniness level, we have the Crucible, which is a direct, instantaneous kill on every enemy. Giant area boss, dead. Previous area boss, dead. The final boss, fuck up. Now I hear you thinking, Josh, that sounds pretty strong. Oh boy, buckle your ass. Because the second super weapon on my extensive list of two things is the BFG, which canonically stands for big fucking gun. Hell yeah. Canonically, it fires a hole directly into the core of Mars. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. Now, I could kill an enemy the long way, or I could kill him and his dog faster than the ATF at Waco. It clears out oh. everything you can see oh instantly. I am so thankful the game limits how many times you can do this. Now, I understand that at first this may seem complicated, but that just isn't true because the entire game is effectively a tutorial for hard mode. And because you're always <laughs> learning as you play, it never feels stale. Doom even lets you choose what stats and runes to upgrade. I spec entirely into mobility and ammo, making my character a flimsy, crack-addled spider monkey. As as a side note, we should release dozens or possibly hundreds of macaques into New York City. They can survive there. Why does Thailand get to keep all of the good monkeys? So what <laughs> more is there to learn about Doom Eternal? Well, have you ever given thought to the various unwashed baboons that I'm fighting? The answer may shock you. Those are the... As you may have guessed, there are at least three, perhaps four demons in the game, which is a lot for someone who is a small, blonde anime lolly such as myself. But it's the variety of the demons that make the game interesting. Demons can fly. They can roll around like hedgehogs, contract obesity, and be bastards. Contract who obesity! Who is Tsushima? Amy Rose? I didn't know she could stand. The point of the entire game, therefore, is to balance targets, switch weapons, and scream internally as you repeatedly fail to be cool. Just oh. like high school. <laughs> what I'm getting at Just is every like demon has completely different behavior and goals from one another. The Doom Hunter rolls around in a comically small tank. The zombies, like us, exist to die. And the Marauder <laughs> produces controversy. He does a lot of damage, blocks your attack, fights you at wild speeds and can only be attacked after blatantly signaling so. I personally have no issue with him as I find the challenge fun and engaging. And if you don't, I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm saying you're bad. I'm not getting into the details for each one since that's not funny, but don't worry, there are 27 of them without DLC. And if you're wondering hmm. why I'm fighting the entire cast of Dante's Inferno, you're actually the minority. <laughs> this game tries at every moment to make exposition collectible. Why is there just a, a fucking big spear in the planet and why is heaven comprised entirely of moth people. You cannot stop the procession. <laughs> It feels like one guy wrote the events of the game and another guy invented LSD just to write the backstory. <laughs> so I'm going to combine both of them into a single, accurate interpretation of the Doom lore. If I say something objectionable, just pretend that it's right. <laughs> One Brazilian years ago, there was a guy named The Dad, who was effectively God, and he made moths in lamp heaven called The Makers. Every 10,000 years, all moths combine their collective <laughs> consciousness into one giga moth called The Con Maker, who is the moth pope. So the moths rule of the galaxy, sort of, until Earth happens, and then we start <laughs> fucking everything up. The moth pope <laughs> finds John Doom after a spree of murders, and he explains to her that yes, hell exists. It's weird that humans knew about hell before God. Anyways, <laughs> the moth pope, after finding out that hell is real, very reasonably decides to to sacrifice a planet to it. See, it turns out that God literally pieced the fuck out like 10 million years ago and let the moth do whatever they wanted. So now the con maker <laughs> cannot be replaced and cannot die. So she sort of goes insane from the constant immortality. Now the plan is to get some of that sweet hell energy by repeatedly sacrificing entire planets <laughs> oh, to the Dark dear, Lord dear. in exchange for it. Meanwhile, a sentient robot named Samuel Hayden is very busy on Mars. Earth has this problem called climate change and we need to find a new energy source. So instead of something hard and difficult like solar power, Samuel Hayden is like, what if we extract this cool blue energy from hell? Also, it's on Mars. Earth does this until hell begins breaking into Mars and John Doom stops them, which is the plot of Doom 2016. This makes Samuel Hayden mad because he's funded by the Koch brothers and really doesn't want to build a windmill. So instead of destroying the demonic crucible, he just brings it back to Earth and catapults John Doom into the backstory planet. If you think that sounds unreasonable, just remember that we considered blotting out the sun before building a fucking solar panel. I only <laughs> for the good of humanity. Unsurprisingly, demons invade to recycle Earth into blue energy 
energy for the Moth Pope, so John Doom has to fight both Catholics and Hell. And as you go through the game, you might notice that it just brings up random shit at will. Like, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the Soul Factory is being held there by two gigantic titans, and it's like, okay, I guess Attack on Titan is real now. Doom Slayer, you'll need this knife to kill my son. Oh shit, what'd he do? He's the giant uncontrollable deer titan. The plot of the main game, to understate it, is psychotic, and acts <laughs> as an increasing checklist of galactically convoluted tasks. Just in this one game, John Doom finds an ancient city like three times, goes to the North Pole to kill Santa, fights Croatia, does a little trolling, does a little cockfighting, invades heaven, and permanently kills God, but we'll get back to that. Doom 2016 took place on Mars, but this game has you slung around the universe on a fucking bungee cord, oh so God. I understand completely when people say they don't play Doom Eternal for the plot. They're just wrong. I play Doom <laughs> Eternal for the plot, and that might sound strange to you, but Eternal's plot is pure insanity, and it does everything that it needs to. We are painfully aware that the plot exists as a contrivance because the environmental designer went fucking ballistic. I just don't care. I played every single level, gleefully wondering, oh boy, what stupid shit is next? I can't <laughs> fucking wait. So, play the game for the plot. It is integral to the experience of Doom Eternal. Oh, but Max, or there's a plot hole. How did the Doom Slayer get the first- Everything I've said so far, except some of it, applies in full partially to the base game, but there's $40 reduce of DLC where the gameplay is faster, the challenge harder, and the plot somehow even fucking worse in all the right departments. 2016 was a wash. Eternal is Usain Bolt, and the ancient gods is fucking Venezuelan inflation. You thought it was over when John Doom beat the demons and destroyed all of heaven, but you were wrong. That's just the beginning. And with both parts of the DLC now fully out, my recommendation cannot be understated. Let's get into why, and more importantly, what... This section of the video is going to be different, far more structural, and aligned with the plot of the DLC. Because the gameplay isn't what's new about the product, it's the challenge and the story. I originally wrote an entire script for this and then trashed it because it doesn't truly communicate how this DLC drove me to insanity and I hard cope by simping for 2D women. I will tell you if there's a very big <laughs> gameplay change, but the point of the DLC is more of what's amazing. If you like Doom Eternal, you will like the DLC. Period. Okay, so Samuel <laughs> Hayden, you might know him for his various appearances on political YouTube debates advocating for carbon positivity. It turns out that he's not a robot, he's a fucking angel. Also, John Doom's Alexa is God. That's not a joke <laughs> or exaggeration, his name is Vega and he's the physical remnant of God's consciousness in AI form. So Samuel, now a fucking divine being, wants you to revive him since both God and Satan are trapped in volleyballs. At this point, <laughs> the video can't count as spoilers because it makes no fucking sense. The first DLC <laughs> is essentially trolling because you kill God. Why? Well, obviously to revive Satan, exclusively so you can fight him. <laughs> of particular note here on the gameplay side is the final boss, who is Samuel Hayden. Because holy shit, this fight is hard. Also, the premise is ridiculous, and my enjoyment of the game is hurt by neither. Every aspect of this is speedy, fun, and everything else I've already said about the game in general. And when you finally beat Samuel and revive the Dark Lord, it turns out he's you. Yeah the only thing in the world that could possibly kill John Doom himself. Okay. No blood can be seen. This holy blood. <laughs> so now the not you you decides to go to hell where we all belong and the second DLC <laughs> is just chasing him. This is of course where the testosterone moves into critical levels. How does one get to the capital city of hell? Well, that's a great question. Oh, First of all, <laughs> Argentinoor, light the bat signal, learn how to train your dragon, okay. Go into the giant spear that pierces the entire planet for some reason. Get the key to the gate of Divum. Now go back to Earth, traverse the Last of Us 2, and find the gate of Divum. But before I get to the final showdown with Crash Bandicoot Twin Sanity, there's some cool gameplay I want to talk about. You have a fucking hammer in this DLC, primarily used to defy the laws of gravity, but secondarily gives you everything in the game. Health? No problem. Sweet. Ammo? Absolutely. My deepest, darkest urges? Yes. As I used this, I became more obsessed with hammers than Bob the fucking Builder. And there's plenty of demons to use it on, since the DLC adds a shitload of reskins. For instance, the spirit is a congealed amphetamine mass that makes every infested target three times faster. Microsoft oh Pinball, who is fun to fight, I promise. And the blood 
Makers, they are my original OC. Do not steal it. So now that we've reached Cleveland, it's time for the DLC to gain style. <laughs> this is the culmination of all of our work. The final battle against Satan himself. And holy shit, you can feel it. When the Sentinel army shows up and everyone's ready to kick ass, you just can't help but feel like your dick is being tickled. Cleveland goes <laughs> into the hype too, for once, because it's a non-stop battle of epic proportions right up until the final boss. This is a universe which implicitly acknowledges your godlike power by making the only credible threat to you your identical twin with red eyes in a Gundam. That is called fucking gameplay. And it's a <laughs> send off right up until the man himself who awkwardly waddles around the arena like a penguin, but that's fine, the fight is still cool. <laughs> Wow, you know, it's so sad that Steve Jobs died of Ligma. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma balls. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> <laughs> Now, before we defenestrate, there's a few details I want to talk about that truly complete this game, make it a real 10 out of good. Firstly, I classify the music of this game as metal without guitars, and I fucking dig it so much. How do you make metal without a guitar? Well, you sample Mongolian throat singing and your lawnmower. It just sounds so good. <laughs> Normally, music isn't very important, but it's so good that it becomes important, and the role it plays in setting your mood is vital. Also, the main composer, Mick Gordon, like me, hey there. watches virtual YouTubers every waking second of his day. Great minds think alike. In fact, most of the music in this video is just Doom Eternal soundtrack. Guess you'll have to re-watch it over and over again to really listen. Finally, this game looks really good. Not in a, oh wow, look at all these particles I'm stroking out way. It's more like, how does literally anyone have time to model all of the geometry in the game? It is <laughs> unreal. It is so downright inspired that it makes you feel bad while playing it. Doom Eternal is such a fast and pulse pounding game that it's like sprinting through the fucking Louvre. How am I supposed to appreciate the Mona Lisa when it looks like this? Should you buy the game? Yes, I am very biased. If speed and action is what you crave and you want to induce cardiac arrest early, this is your game. I would like to thank the Demonic Brotherhood funding this channel in exchange for their souls. If you would like to engage in blood sacrifice on my behalf, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. Thank you all for watching, and of course, run, they're coming. All right, our first uh, Maxor uh, video. And so, sorry I mispronounced your name, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the beginning of this one. But you know, there's a zero there, so I didn't know, you know, first time I heard it, so that's, that's my excuse. What'd you think? That was a trip. That was so intense, it was, uh, yeah, Oof. Yeah. Sensory um, overload. Very much. Sensory overload. Um, but it was funny. It was what I like about it is I think it it touched on on a lot of Doom Eternal that is very appealing, which is just the adrenaline, the action packed mm, adrenaline mm -hmm. ride that it appears to be. And this this video kind of diving into it and explaining it seemed to to mirror exactly that. You know, two things that I, I, I don't do, but I imagine it was like is, uh, you know, slamming a uh, monster energy drink and doing a line of Coke. And it's just like, that's like what this is. <laughs> that's, I think that's what you experienced when you do those things is, is what this video kind of was. It was a fun review. And so like, it, it, it was a, it was an accurate review of the game. Uh, obviously, clearly, uh, really enjoys the game, but at the same time, like not taking himself too seriously, I guess, is what I was what I really enjoyed. Like, he understood what the game is and why he loves it without mm -hmm. it being something that he takes too seriously or or follows to an extreme per se. It was sort of like this was for entertainment, and that's why he loved it. Sort of like embracing what other might, people might think is a flaw, like using that and just being like, no, like that. this is one of the reasons why it makes it so great is this like crazy, fucked up, like insane convoluted story that is uh, like so engaging along, like like kind of goes with the whole crazy, fucked up, insane, convoluted, like like action, like that is just nonstop. Stop. And I liked how he said that uh, very early on, it's like this footage is not sped up. It's just like this is how fast paced and crazy the game is. I think sometimes because games have evolved so much and because they get these these amazing stories and mm -hmm. beautiful worlds and artwork and everything else, um, it could also be very easy to be sort of like a game snob and be like, yeah. yes, this plot was just not good enough. <laughs> um, and I love that he loved it for what it was. Mm -hmm. and And I think that's, that's what makes it fun. It's like games at the core are supposed to be entertainment. They're not made to change the world. Yeah. They're made to be fun. They're made to be escapism. They're made to entertain us and take us out of our own lives for a short period of time. If adrenaline and action and nonsense is your thing, doom is your thing and you can love it for that.
it's unapologetic. And mm-hmm. I think that is so empowering when you get to a place in, in your life, whatever that may be, where you are unapologetically you. Because society and culture will make you feel like you have to apologize for a lot. Yeah. Like you're you're not smart enough, or you're not educated enough, or you're not of the right political persuasion or religious persuasion or whatever else that it is. Um, but it was unapologetic without being like an asshole or yeah, jaded. Without like, being pretentious. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, yeah, without without any of that. Like it was unapologetic without the neg- negativity of it. Because like a lot of times with being unapologetic, it feels like you have to like be unapologetic and throw that in someone's face. Yes. And like, you know, like, like, like well, I don't care what you think. I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna be me. But like, it, it wasn't in that. It was like, it's like I don't care if you don't like what I like. Yep. I still like it, and I still like it for what it is, and I still like it for the reason. And the reasons that I like something, like, can't be diminished. Like, you can't diminish what I. You know, the reason that I like this game. Like, you know, I like it for its crazy plot. I like it for its stupid plot. I like it for the the insanity. I like it for the violence. I like it for the you know for the fast pace of it of it all. You know, and like. Things that you might think that like, you know, like, like are, are, are knocks against it, whatever. I still, I, I like it for those reasons. And if, you know, you don't like it for that. Okay. But like, this is why I like it. And like, I'm not going to apologize for that. That's what I like about the unapologetic. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. I, th- I, think, that was, I think that was great. Um, I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt who said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Yeah. And like, yes, Eleanor Roosevelt, great quote, love the spirit of the thought, but Throughout most of your life, it's going to be really hard not to grant that consent. Mm -hmm. People are going to make you feel a certain way that then you're going to feel misfit or out of place or whatever else it is that you are subconsciously and immediately granting consent without even wanting to because nobody wants to feel bad. Um, And so I think the most attractive place that you can get to in your life is when you are unapologetically yourself, mm-hmm. but without having to prove yourself there it to is. anyone or anything. There it is. Well you, said. You, you are yourself. You love yourself. You embrace yourself and all of your wonderful imperfections because that's what makes you you. Yeah. And that is a great place to be. I don't know who actually gets to that perfect point in their life, but God, I hope I get there someday. I, I, I think you're there. I think you're there. <laughs> and I think that uh, well, also Paul, the uh, unapologetic thing is that like, you know, just not let, yeah. Not um, not letting other people's ju- uh, uh, judgments get to you and, uh, you know, but at the same time, accepting other people's judgments, like, you know, accepting the fact that other people are, n- are not going to like the same things you like and are not going to like, you know, you and I'm going to judge you like, I mean, and might judge you based on that. But like, you know, kind of like, I don't know, accepting the fact that like that doesn't make them like necessarily like a terrible person because they don't right. like the same things you don't like or because they or, or even because they judge you like, you know, I mean, it just it happens. But uh, I, I love videos like this that make us. Uh, get into these kind of conversations yep. and think more than just, I mean, it's a video, it's a video game review. All right. But like it was, it was done so well that it like, it sparked yep. these conversations within us. And uh, that's why I thought I think it's a, it's a great video. I think that's really well said. And I think the what makes it so fun and interesting to interact with our community, to check out these different videos mm-hmm. is the fact that none of us are going to have the same opinions on everything. Yeah. And we get to experience new opinions and new thoughts and new ideas through these things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if if everyone were like me, the world would be an incredibly boring place. <laughs> exactly. If for nobody else, then at least for me. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, embracing our, our difference of thoughts, our difference of opinions, mm-hmm. our difference of, of joy of gaming yeah. um, and shouting it out for how great it is. You'll let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. You obviously heard what we thought. We had a lot to say about it. And uh, it was a really great job, really great video uh, by Maxor. Yes. And thanks so much for checking out our reaction for the Doom Eternal review Alpha Male Gaming by Maxor. But just keep in mind that our reaction is definitely not definitive. <laughs>